Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa Ann Spencer. Thank you so much for stopping by and visiting with me today. Today is my third episode of participating in Hashtag Friday Sews and I am still very excited about participating in the sewing community. So I wanted to start today by saying a few things. I have lots I want to say, but I'm going to try not to make this video over long. But since I am new to this, I do want to um, give a little bit of information about myself, maybe for those of you who are new to the channel, which reminds me what I want to say is like in a matter of a week, which seems like overnight, I picked up like nearly 50 new subscribers. And my mind was a little blown. I'm like, this sewing community, they are very supportive. It's really amazing. And I just wanted to say thank you and welcome. I know that you're here because of the hashtag Friday Sews and I appreciate you coming along. And it really makes me want to be consistent and participate every Friday uh, for my sake to keep going through this pile of backlog projects that I've had for years years and also just to produce some content for you that makes it worth your while as a subscriber. So I hope that I can do that. Um, if you've subscribed to my channel that means you're going to get notifications and see my other videos that pop up and uh, predominantly I do Bible studies for women. So I just wanted to issue a little warning here for you, for those of you who may not be expecting that. I know there are other ladies who sew that do devotions and those types of things. And by the way, I've been binging on hashtag Friday Sews. Um, so let me stop here and say, if you use the magnifying glass, the search bar, and type in hashtag Friday Sews, you will get all these videos, thousands, and they're wonderful. But also you can click on the recently added up at the top and that gives you all the new ones first. I have been doing that this last week or two and really catching up with a lot of you ladies. So I'm so excited. I've subscribed to a lot of channels myself this week. Uh, but anyway, uh, I did want to say thank you so much to those of you who have come over. I do put out um, Bible videos about twice a month and just a warning because I'm not a sweet little uh, old lady devotional teacher. No offense to those ladies who are sweet and do devotions. I watch those and I appreciate them. But I'm a Bible teacher. I try to teach people how to use their Bible for themselves, to be able to study it for themselves and know things. So um, it might be offensive to some, and that's okay. Um, I hope that you'll just stick with me in the Friday Sews. But every now and then I will talk about things that are on my mind from the Bible. So just warning there. All right. Um, what else? I don't know. Life stuff is our family is preparing for a possible move. So it's been quite busy. Um, and I'm not going to let that stop me from making a quick video. I film my videos on Wednesday uh, because we go to church on Wednesday night and I get dressed and put makeup on. It's something that I don't do every day. So I do that for your sake so that, I mean, one day you might see me. And if you go look at my garden videos, uh, you'll see me, you know, sweating and with no makeup on. But anyway, that's all beside the point. My gardening videos and my Bible videos they never grew by 50 subscribers <laughs> overnight. Um, those communities are not as supportive. And that's fine. Bible is serious and people shouldn't just subscribe randomly to Bible channels. You should always use caution when you're following people um, and their teaching on the Bible. Um, gardening, maybe they're the gardeners should learn something from the sewist. Um, the gardeners, if they could be as supportive as the um, sewing community, wow, that channel might grow as well. But anyway, um, if you're interested in gardening and Bible, you can also check out those playlists on my channel. And uh, I have an Etsy site where I sell seeds. I'm a seed saver. I participate in Seed Savers Exchange and uh, I offer a lot of heirloom seeds that I have grown myself. All that you're going to find on the About page. 
All right, enough of that. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what I've gotten done. Um, in my last video, I was just finishing up the curtains, which are intended to go in my daughter's room, but I wanted a backdrop for Hashtag Friday Sews so you wouldn't have to look at uh, my hanging clothes, you know, the whole episode. So anyway, I got that done um, thanks to the motivation from Hashtag Friday Sews. And I also want to do a shout out here for today in Jen's sewing room. This is the first time I've gotten it right. I've called it Jen's sewing room. And I know all you know who I'm talking about. And I always link her below. Um, hashtag Friday Sews was her creation. And so thank you again, Jen, uh, today in Jen's sewing room. All right, so I did finish my um, chicken feed tote bag. Got the handles sewn on and finished it up. So I'm gonna put that in my van so that I can have it for carrying groceries in and out when I do short trips. The jeans. <clears throat> I'm going to insert a picture here of my bed and my floor covered in jeans where I trimmed, you know, salvaged old jeans that had been in my pile for uh, at least five years, but really longer than that. I cut them into strips and I'm really wanting to use those to make something. So what I have decided I'm going to make is, where did it go? I've had this um, Threads magazine for a long time, uh, March 2004. <laughs> I bought it because I wanted to learn how to tailor pants to fit myself, but I don't even wear pants anymore, or very rarely. I'm mostly a dress girl these days, but in this episode, in this issue, is a article, an article on gourd skirts and inserting godets. So that's what I want to do with my jeans. I want to make myself a maxi skirt um, with gores, a gourd skirt with godets in the bottom. So that is what I'm going to do with all those jeans um, sometimes in the near future. Also, when I cut my jeans, I had tons of pockets, tons and tons. So I made this little prototype. I'm still in the middle of it. I took the six pockets, stitched them together. I'm going to um, edge it with um, some bias binding made out of the strips of jeans. I'm going to line it with this pretty um, linen, I don't know what you call this, and I've had this forever. But my daughter, she has chickens, so this is going to be her chicken egg gathering apron when I'm done. And I've got lots more pockets, so I thought I might list a couple on the Etsy site eventually to see if anybody's interested in those. All right, so that's the jean project, and oh, what else? I did a few other things, but I'll get to those later. I did buy some pillow forms, and I am going to make a couple of t-shirt pillows for my daughter, hopefully this week, if not in the near future. What I have for you today, which I think is so interesting, is... I have a pattern. I'll put a picture here so you can pause and look close up if you like. But here's the pattern in a Ziploc bag. I bought this pattern off eBay about 20 years ago. It is a um, vintage 1907 bonnet pattern. Baby bonnet. And a long time ago, I used to sew bloomers and bonnets. When I had little girls, I made the diaper covers and the pretty bonnets, and I would sell those on eBay. I used to sew a lot, and I'm like, what happened? Why did I, why did I lose my sojo? Um, I had six children. Um, then we bought a farm, and I started farming. And sewing kind of slipped down on the priority list. I would sew, but not like I used to. 
Lisa Hu. I'm glad again for Hashtag Friday Sews. It has really motivated me watching you ladies out there do your thing. Uh, I'm very inspired and look forward to continuing this journey with you. But anyway, this 1907 baby bonnet pattern. Um, I have cut out all views from an old sheet. It's a um, cream colored, it's 100% Egyptian cotton, so it's really very nice, but it's also old, and so I'm not worried about making errors. I'm gonna make a couple of um, prototypes or twalls, is that right? I've heard some ladies use that um, term. I wanna learn the terminology while I'm doing this. So I am going to work on these this week, so next week I should have those available for you to view. My daughter, who also has an Etsy shop, she makes stuffed animals and she repairs stuffed animals um, for little children who have favorites that they've worn down to nothing. She's a wonderful sewist, but she suggested that maybe I make this pattern available through my Etsy site. Well, that's a learning curve for me, but you know, I'll work on that in the near future and see how that goes. I'll try to remember to put a link to my daughter's Etsy, but I don't think she has anything listed right now. She makes uh, like Star Wars characters um, from the animated series, and uh, she sells her creations for a pretty high dollar and makes a nice little income. So anyway, I'll introduce you to her someday. All right, so really, I think that that is it. I'm not gonna sit here and sew and, um, you know, do anything in particular. Oh, I do want to show something. Um, this bonnet pattern, you may have noticed that, um, I'm not sure if this is gonna focus, but this one here is, it's called plated, and that's how it's pronounced. We would say pleated. But in the instructions in 1907, it says, send the material to the platers. Well, my 1948 Singer sewing machine, which by the way, came with its original book and all the original accessories, which includes a ruffle foot, which does pleat. So I've never used this before. So one of the things in making this bonnet is I'm going to be learning how to operate this ruffle foot. So that'll be exciting. Okay, um, can't think of anything else. If you guys have any comments or questions, please drop those below. And I look forward to getting to know you as we continue in this sewing journey. Thank you and see you next time.